the water. Kai. Thank you, Holy Spirit. All praises to a higher he said. That's all praises to a no he said. That's all praises to the great I am loving kindness. Bahashim Yeshaya. Bahashim Motsa the Lamb. In the name of the Messiah, the Masiach. I'm talking about the Sun people, Shalawam family. This is Little Son Sabal Nabaya. Family, today we're going to talk about. The right hand of the Father. I'm talking about the right hand of Anoki said. The right hand of Ahaya. And to some of you, the right hand of God. We're talking about the right hand of the Most High people. So family... Let's jump straight into the scriptures. Let's go to Psalm chapter 16. And let's read verse 11. That's Psalm chapter 16, verse 11. It says, Thou wilt show me the path of life. In thy presence is fullness of joy. At thy right hand are pleasures forevermore. So, already, already family, we're reading this and understanding that there are pleasures at his right hand. But why is the right hand, why is that emphasized? Stay in the book of Psalm, and let's go to Psalm 17, and let's read verse 7. Psalm 17, verse 7. It says, Show thy marvelous loving kindness, O thou that savest by thy right hand them which put their trust in thee. From those that rise up against him. Wow. Show thy marvelous loving kindness. Thou that savest by thy right hand. Again, we're seeing major significance when it comes to the right hand. So family, let's get some more information on this right hand. Let's go to the book of Matthew, chapter 26. And let's start reading at verse 59. We're going to read verses 59 through 64. That's Matthew 26, verses 59 through 64. It says, Now the chief priest and elders and all the council." sought false witness against Jesus to put him to death, but found none. Yea, though many false witnesses came, yet found they none. At the last came two false witnesses and said, This fellow said, I am able to destroy the temple of God and to build it in three days. And the high priest arose and said unto him, Answerest thou nothing? What is it which these witness have against thee? But Jesus held his peace. And the high priest answered and said unto him, I adjure thee by the living God, that thou tell us whether thou be 
the Christ, the Son of God. Jesus saith unto him, Thou hast said, Nevertheless I say unto you, Hereafter shall ye see the Son of Man sitting on the right hand of power and coming in the clouds of heaven. So family, the Messiah is letting you know right now that he's going to be coming, sitting at the right hand of power. We all know who the Most High our power is. This is talking about a Hayek, he said. This is talking about a Noki said, the Most High. Understand what we're reading. So, the Messiah, the Messiah family, sits at the right hand of the Father. And are we not to follow the example of the Messiah in all things? Now, family, let's go back to Psalm 17 and read verse 7 again. Psalm 17, verse 7. It says, Show thy marvelous loving kindness, O thou that savest by thy right hand them which put their trust in thee from those that rise up against them. Oh, now it makes more sense. It says, Thou that savest by thy right hand. And we understand, family, that anyone who wants to be saved by the Father has to go through the Son who sits at the right hand of his Father. But we aren't done, family, because there's more on the right hand. So now stay in Psalm and let's go to Psalm chapter 20. Psalm chapter 20 and let's read verse 6. Psalm chapter 20 verse 6. It says, Now know, now know I that the Lord saveth is anointed. He will hear him from his holy heaven with the saving strength of his right hand. All right, so we're getting more. We're getting more on the salvation that comes at his right hand. But we aren't done. Let's go to Psalm chapter 48 and let's read verse 10. Psalm chapter 48, verse 10. It says, According to thy name, O God, so is thy praise unto the ends of the earth. Thy right hand is full of righteousness. Uh oh. His right hand is full of righteousness? Well, what did we read in Psalm chapter 16? Let's read it again. Verse 11. Psalm chapter 16, verse 11. It says, Thou wilt show me the path of life. In thy presence is fullness of joy. At thy right hand there are pleasures forevermore. Oh my goodness. So at thy right hand there are pleasures forevermore, but Psalm 48 verse 10 said thy right hand is full of righteousness. So family, there is pleasure forevermore in righteousness. And what is righteousness, family? We have talked about this many times. Righteousness is the right relationship with the spirits and element or that is to say it is the right relationship with everything you have to understand family that we should be seeking how the father feels about a thing so that we can know as those who are created in his image we can know the right relationship that we are supposed to have with everything. So if it's something the Father doesn't deal with, 
then it should be something that we don't deal with. And if the Father finds satisfaction in it, then we should find satisfaction in it. And if it repulses the Father, then it should repulse us. Are you hearing me, family? We want to have the right relationships with everything. So, at his right hand, it is full of righteousness. It is full of all of the right relationships. But let's get some more, family. Stay in Psalm and let's go to Psalm 63. Psalm 63, verse 8. It says, My soul followeth hard after thee. Thy right hand upholdeth me. So family, if we follow hard after him, if we seek him first, his right hand will uphold us. Let me tell you what this verse did not say. This verse did not say that if we follow hard after him well not super hard but kind of hard if we also follow hard after wickedness and after the lust of the flesh that his right hand will uphold us no that's not what it said you can't be lukewarm family yes there is grace but understand family that you don't get to seek all of the things of this world and think that you're going to be constantly upheld and protected. No, you have to show, you have to show that you're putting forth your best work. You have to show that you're trying. And trust me, family, his grace is sufficient if you're actually putting forth the effort, but don't think you can fake the funk with him. Because he can see inside of your heart. Understand that with every breath you take, his eyes are watching the very insides of your soul. So you can't fake it with him. He trieth the reins. He can see all that's on the inside of you. So family, follow hard after him. And his right hand will uphold you. Are you hearing me, family? Let's go to Psalm 80. Psalm 80. And let's read verse 17 because we're about to get more on the right hand. Watch this. Psalm chapter 80, verse 17. It says, let thy hand be upon the man of thy right hand. Uh Uh-oh. Psalm chapter 80 is saying something amazing. It is saying that there is a man of his right hand. Let's keep reading. Let thy hand be upon the man of thy right hand, upon the son of man, whom thou madest strong for thyself. Uh Uh-oh. So now there are men who the Father makes strong for his sake. Family, why, why would the Father need to make men to be strong for his sake? Well, family, We have talked about this before. We have talked about the first and second decree of creation. So family, let's read the first decree of creation. Let's go into the book of remembrance of Melchizedek. You can actually read about this also in First Chi. And also in the book of remembrance of Enoch. But let's go into it. The the book of remembrance of Melchizedek chapter 1. 
and let's read verse 74. The book of Remembrance of Melchizedek, chapter 1, verse 74. It reads, And God said, All creation and all of my and man's doings with each other must needs be within the bounds of the two great decrees of creation. The first decree of creation is that I can be a father to man in creation by the power of the intervention of the agency of my son who is in the flesh as are all men. So family, we, <clears throat> excuse me. So family, we see that the first decree of creation is saying is saying that the father can be a father to man in creation by the power of the intervention of the agency of his son. In other words, by the intervention that comes from the free will of his son, who is in the flesh as are all men. So now, family, we read the first decree of creation. Now let's read the second decree of creation. Stay in the book of remembrance of Melchizedek. And let's go to Melchizedek chapter, let's see, let's go to Melchizedek chapter 8, and let's read verse 92. Melchizedek chapter 8, verse 92, it says, And it has been the belief among the righteous since ancient times that Anoki said will not force his way among mankind and this is shown in the second decree of creation and it says the second decree of creation is that all the doings of creation and all the affairs of the salvation of man must be done by man through the power of the interventions of their agency you see that family? So <clears throat> the second decree of creation is letting you know that anything pertaining to salvation must be done by man through the power of the intervention of our free will. And that falls in line with the first decree of creation because the Messiah the Messiah is a man, is a man who is in the flesh as are all men. He had to come down here and be born and walk in the flesh, family. So understand that literally all the doings of salvation, well, they are done by man through the power of the intervention of our free will. And the Messiah is included in that number. So now, family, let's go back to Psalm chapter 80 and read verse 17 again. Psalm chapter 80, verse 17. It says, Let thy hand be upon the man of thy right hand, upon the son of man, whom thou madest strong for thyself. Family, why would the father need to make man strong for himself? <clears throat> Family, the reason why is because, because when our soul followeth hard after him, his right hand is going to uphold us. Are you hearing me, family? The father is going to make us strong through righteousness family because he understands that all the affairs of salvation must be done by man family <laughs> so family the father the father expects us to do our part 
You understand? You don't sit back and let the Messiah do everything. As a matter of fact, one of the repentances, when we, when we go into the repentances that we all need to do in our process of becoming, one of those repentances is that we need to repent for the times that we were content to let him go about his doings alone. I believe that's the repentance that deals with Malachiel, the mountains. They feel the burden of the Father and the burden of the Messiah. That's what Malachiel deals with. That's what the mountains deal with. But we're not focusing on that right now. So, getting back to where we were. Now let's go. Let's go to, let's see. Let's go to Psalm 98. Psalm 98, and let's read verse 1. Psalm 98, verse 1. It says, O sing unto the Lord a new song, for he hath done marvelous things. His right hand and his holy arm hath gotten him the victory. Wow, look at that. So his right hand and his holy arm hath gotten him the victory. Now you're seeing a distinction. It didn't say that he got him the victory. It very well could have said that, but it didn't say that, did it? No, it said his right hand and his holy arm hath gotten him the victory. This is letting you know, family. That the Father, the Father is expecting us to help him get the victory. But we aren't done. Go to Psalm 118. Psalm 118. And let's read verses 14 through 16. Psalm 118 verses 14 through 16. It says, The Lord is my strength and song and is become my salvation. The voice of rejoicing and salvation is in the tabernacles of the righteous. The right hand of the Lord doeth valiantly. The right hand of the Lord is exalted. The right hand of the Lord doeth valiantly. So family, this is letting you know that when you are operating as the right hand of the Lord, that you have to operate in righteousness. You have to do valiantly. Do we understand, family? Do we understand that we have to be vigilant? You understand? We have to have a valiant character. That is the way we are to go about our lives, family, in righteousness. But we aren't done, family. Go to the book of Isaiah, chapter 41. The book of Isaiah, chapter 41. And let's read verse 10. Isaiah 41 and 10. It reads, Fear thou not, for I am with thee. Be not dismayed, for I am thy God. I will strengthen thee, yea, I will help thee, yea, I will uphold thee with the right hand of my righteousness. Wow, family. So, again, you're seeing that application of his right hand upholding us through righteousness family with all of the right relationships oh but family we are not done let's go now to the book of Esther chapter 8 and let's read verse 17 Esther Chapter 8, verse 17. It says, 
and in every province and in every city whithersoever the king's commandment and his decree came the Jews had joy and gladness a feast and a good day and many of the people of the land became Jews for the fear of the Jews fell upon them so family question how can someone become a Jew does this verse even make sense well family of course the verse makes sense when you break it down when you go into that word for Jews family it says in your strongs it is H3054 and that word is Yahad and the definition that it gives you it says to become Jewish become Jews it says to become a Jew in fact or in fraud become Judaized well family I don't subscribe to this definition because this doesn't make sense let's look at this word in the Hebrew in the Hebrew family this word is Yahad and it starts with the Yod the Yod family is representative of the hand and what are we talking about we're talking about the hand of the father all day long right then the next thing we see is the hay. The hay family is representative of the spirit family. The spirit is representative of the breath. The breath, the spirit. So you've got the hand and then you've got the spirit and then finally you have a dalit in this word. And the dalit family is the door. It is the way. Family, who is it that said that he is the door, that he is the way? Who is it that we come to when we stand at the door and knock, family? That's right. It's the Messiah, family. So, in this word that is Yahad, we're seeing the hand, the spirit, and the way, family family this is saying something very powerful but we're gonna get more on this word family on this word Yahad so family let's go into the book of remembrance of Enoch the Essene book of Haggai and let's go to Bidal chapter 9 and let's read verse 26 that's Bidal chapter 9, verse 26, in the book of remembrance of Enoch, the Essene book of Haggai. Verse 26 says, And the place you shall establish shall have three names. First, it shall be called Ma'in, because it is my abode and the place where I may live with man and the Irkadeshi Salakia so let me read that the way it should be flowing first it shall be called Mayin because it is my abode and the place where I may live with man and the Irkadeshi alright now let's keep reading and it shall be called Yahad because of the sweet effect of our Yod in the lives of the people of Anoki said, who dwell together in community. All right, family, so what is this talking about? It's talking about it's talking about the people who dwell together in community. This is talking family about the church it says and it shall be called Yahad are you hearing me family 
So in other words, when we read in the book of Esther that these people became Jews family, it is letting you know that these people joined the church of the Father. Are you understanding me? And where this is talking about Mayim, his abode, family, this is talking about righteous community. This is talking about Zion family. As a matter of fact, family, if you read at the bottom of the page of, of this particular page up under verse 26, it goes into detail about this word about Mayim and about Zion in the footnotes. I'm not going to read it right now because I don't want to shift the focus from where we are, but I'm letting you know that the people the people in Esther, where it says they became Jews, family, is letting you know that they joined the congregation of the righteous. These people, family, these people repented. They repented, family, and they became Yahad. And Yahad, family, it says they are called Yahad. Because of the sweet effect of our Yod. But family, what is Yod? What is Yod, family? Hmm. Well, family, to see what Yod is, let's go in your Strong's Concordance to, let's go to, let's see, let's go to, H3027 3027 in your strong concordance and look what it says it says Yod it says a primitive word a hand a hand family and then it goes into a whole lot of other words dealing with strength dealing with ministry but the thing I want you to get is a hand family and what have we been talking about we've been talking about the right hand of the father look at this word yod in the strongs in the hebrew it is the yod which we've talked about as meaning the hand and the dalit which we've talked about as being the door the way and we know that the messiah is the way so this word for hand is encompassing, is encompassing the hand and the Messiah and the way. The word for hand that is a primitive word is a powerful word, family. But we aren't done. Let's get more on, more on the Yod. Let's go to Stay in the book of remembrance of Enoch family, the Essene book of Haggai. And let's look at chapter 9, but let's go to verse, let's go to verse 83. And let's read 83 and 84. Psalm, I mean, I'm sorry, Bidal chapter 9, verses 83 and 84. It says, and it came to pass that I saw an astonishing thing to me. For I beheld that Yod also became a living soul. Uh-oh. Yod became a living soul, family? The hand of God became a living soul. Let's keep reading. For I beheld that Yod also became a living soul and an identifiable spirit that had life. And it moved with effect in the midst of each soul in the holy congregation to guide and show them the way. And Yod became a living soul with a name and a vision. And it was respected in the same manner as any living soul by the holy host of heaven. And Yod was not viewed 
as a vehicle of power or control, but viewed in the same manner as a loved one who is respected and given their rightful place in the presence of the Lord. Wow, family. Let's read verse 84. And as I looked with Urim, I could see that Yod expressed no authority to act to control the lives of any people for the glory of men or for gain. And also I saw that Yod asserted no authority before the world and it acted the same as Anoki said at the judgment. But Yod was known only as the means for the righteous in community to act in common in their pursuit of repentance and perfection of way and the power of godliness. Wow, family. Family, what this just said, what this just broke down was the way that we are to act if we are if we are to be if we are to be Yod if we are to be members of Yahad if we are to be in the congregation of the righteous and if we are to act with everything that comes with being the right hand of the Father family are you understanding me? This says, family, that Yod expresses no authority to act to control the lives of anyone and is not done for the glory of men or for gain. So when you look at all of your mega churches and you see these pastors that have exalted themselves, a red flag should go off, family. There should be a spiritual alarm that lets you know that these people may have good intentions, but they're not rocking the way they're supposed to be rocking. Not according to the spirit, family. Because you can see the exaltation that they deal with. You can see the vain glory that they deal with. And you can see how they try to control the lives of their congregation. How many of y'all have dealt with ministries before that were trying to control their congregation? Either for good or for bad. I've seen it both ways. I've seen ministries family try and coerce their members to get vaccinated. Mm -hmm. I've seen ministries family try and push their memory try to push their members to be allied with secret societies and sororities and fraternities and things of the like. I've seen ministries family try and push their members into certain jobs and into certain positions. Are you hearing me, family? This is not, this, this, these actions are not the actions of a ministry, <clears throat> of a ministry that is being guided by the spirit, by the very spirit that is Yod, because it says that Yod, all, <clears throat> excuse me, it says that Odd, all, Yod also became a living soul. And an identifiable spirit that had life. And it moves in the midst of each soul in the holy congregation to guide and show them the way. Are you hearing me, family? In other words, family, the spirit of Yod is going to work in concert with the Holy Spirit. And if, if the Holy Spirit family isn't found in the hearts of the people in the congregation, then family, the spirit of Yod is not going to show in the midst of that congregation. So you really, 
You really got to try the spirit in these congregations, in these churches. And I'm not just talking about the Christian churches either, family. I'm talking about some of these online organizations. I'm talking about some of these Hebrew Israelite churches, family. Yeah. Family, just because you have, just because you have a, an organization that is teaching you truth well family there's some some level of truth in a luciferian church there's some level of truth in hinduism there's some level of truth in islam family there's truth all over the place so just because you have some level of truth operating does it mean that you're getting the holy spirit and it doesn't mean that you're operating with the spirit that is meant to accompany the congregation of the righteous. <clears throat> Are you understanding me, family? There is a spirit that should accompany you when you're operating the way you should be with a holy congregation. But we aren't done, family. We aren't done. Let's read a little bit more. Let's read a little bit more. Let's go and read verse 85 now. Let's read verse 85. We're still in Bedal chapter 9, verse 85. It says, And it was the people who would not allow evil in their midst to remain. And it was the people who would stand up for walking in perfection of way. And it was the people who directed their affairs in Yod according to the leadings of the Spirit and by the power of godliness. And all of this could come about because of the people of Yod found sorrow. Sarakia, I put the word of in there. Let me read that again. And all of this could come about because the people of Yod found sorrow, happiness, Thankfulness, learning, endurance, wisdom, and redemption, all in common. And because of this, the soul of Yod was formed, and it became strong. You see that, family? So the soul of Yod, the soul of Yod was formed, and it became strong. Family, this is why... This is why the scriptures talk about how we should mourn with our fellows and we should be happy and celebrate with our fellows. You understand, family? When a congregation experiences these things, they do it together. So this congregation found sorrow and happiness and thankfulness and learning and endurance and wisdom and redemption all in common. They experienced all of these things, family, together with one another, family. This is why you fall on the necks of each other, family, because family, you become a congregation. You become a family. That's why I call you all family over and over and over again. Every lesson, find a lesson where I don't call you family, family. Because, family, I am teaching you righteousness and I am showing you how to experience these things together, all in common, family. And it's not me. I don't want to take any credit for this. It's the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is leading us this way, leading us into these things, family, showing us, teaching us how to be a righteous congregation, how to be a holy congregation family. It is showing us, family, how to become Yahad family. Are you hearing me? And in this respect, this is why your Bible says, and they became, <clears throat> and they became Jews. It says that family because it's not making a distinction family between bloodlines. It is showing you family 
it is showing you that you family through repentance family can become a part of the family of the father as a matter of fact family what does it say in the book of Matthew what does it say about the family of the Messiah what does it say let's read it let's read it let's go to Matthew chapter 12 Matthew chapter 12 and let's read verses 46 through 50 Matthew chapter 12 verses 46 through 50 it says while he yet talked to the people behold his mother and his brethren stood without desiring to speak with him then one said unto him behold thy mother and thy brethren stand without desiring to speak with thee but he answered and said unto him that told him who is my mother and who are my brethren? And he stretched forth his hand towards his disciples and said, Behold, my mother and my brethren, for whosoever shall do the will of my Father which is in heaven, the same is my brother and sister and mother. Wow, family. The Messiah said, If you do the will of my Father, you are my family. Wow, family. Wow, family. And it's so good if you keep reading, family. Um, I'm going to ask you guys to, to keep reading. In If you go um, into the Book of Remembrance of Enoch, we stopped reading in Bidal chapter 9, verse 86. But keep reading, family, because it goes into the ceremonies of the church. It's letting you know the things that a congregation does together. So on your own time, read that. We're gonna we're gonna stay on task over here though, family. We're gonna stay on task. Because we aren't done. We aren't done when when it comes to the yod. We aren't done, family. So so now family, we're going to next level the hand of the father stay in the book of remembrance of Enoch the Essene book of Haggai and go to Bidal chapter 11 and family let's read let's read verses 23 through 26 that's Bidal chapter 11 verses 23 through 26 and it says verse 23 and the Lord so this is Messiah speaking it says and the Lord went on to say that there are portions of authority of Elda which make up the whole remember family we talked about Elda last week Elda is the abode Elda is the abode of the father in heaven that is his heavenly abode, Elda, and it means God is here. So it says, it says that there are portions of authority of Elda, which make up the whole, and they arise out of the unique abilities of his people. All right, family, so now we know that people have unique abilities. Remember, family, each and every one of us has a vision of created purpose, family. And so within those purposes, family, we all have unique designations. Remember, we are all very specific parts of the body, family. Let's keep reading. It says, and they arise out of unique abilities of his people to know specific kinds of desires of Anoki said. So family, our unique abilities have to do with the desire of the Father. Let's keep reading. For no one person can know all of his desires. Uh-oh, family. No one person can know all of his desires. So when you have a supposed man of God boasting and bragging that he has all the spiritual gifts, a spiritual alarm should go off. 
a red flag should be raised, family, because this says that no one person can know all of the desires of Anoki said. Let's keep reading. And herein lies a principal benefit for the Lord to have man dwell in community. And it was the task of Enoch after he was instructed in these things to identify those unique abilities to know the desires of Enoki said in the men of Yod and to establish them for the benefit of the people of the Lord and not one of the unique abilities to know his desires is above the other. Wow, family. So, not one of these abilities is above the other. Family, doesn't the Bible say that he is not a respecter of persons? Family, he's not going to put one above the other based on the spiritual gifts that they have. He doesn't do that. Let's keep reading. And it came to pass that Enoch did as he was directed by Mosa the Lamb. And he established these various callings among the men of Yod. And it was done by the element of righteousness to magnify each one in their calling and purpose. And there is nothing among the wicked that can equal it. And these are the divisions of authority of Elda, whom Anoki said calls the men of his right hand, or the men of Ishyad. Wow, family. The men of Ishyad. Are you hearing me, family? So, Anoki said calls the men who are operating amongst the Yod. He calls them the men of his right hand, the men who are operating amongst the congregation of the righteous family. Ishad, let's look at that in the Strong's Concordance. In the Strong's Concordance family, let's look at, let's see. Let's look at in your Strong's Concordance, go to, let's see, first family, go to, go to H376 in your Strong's Concordance. H376 in your Strong's Concordance is Ish, and it simply means man, Ish, it says a man as an individual or male person. You see that family? So a man, ish, and then family, the other part of the word we've already looked at, and that's 3027 in the Strong's, and that is Yod. So the words for man and hand combine, and they are ish Yod. And Ishad family, Ishad are the men of his right hand. Isn't that amazing, family? The men of his right hand, the men who operate amongst the congregation of the righteous, the men who operate amongst the living soul of the Yad family who are being led by that living spirit family. Wow. So now family, now let's go over these men, these divisions of authority in Elda family. These divisions of authority that come from Elda, that come from the abode of our father who is in heaven these things that help us to know his desires, family. Let's go over these divisions of authority. And remember, family, while 
there's divisions of authority. The authority that comes from these things do not exalt you as a man. Are you understanding me, family? So, while there are levels, while there are levels to these spiritual gifts, the levels don't exalt man. As a matter of fact, family, once the man starts being exalted, then he has debased himself. You hear me, family? You, you got to walk in humility. You have to remain humble, family. If you don't walk in humility, if you aren't humble, what are you doing? What are you doing? Go sit down somewhere and learn to be humble before you decide to try and teach and walk with people. So, let's look at this family. Let's go over these divisions of authority. Let's go over the men of his right hand. Let's go back into the book of remembrance of Enoch, the Essene book of Haggai. And let's go to chapter 11 and let's read verses 26 through 32. That's verses 26 through 32. It says... And these are the divisions of the authority of Elda, whom Anoki said calls the men of his right hand, or the men of Ishiad. One he calls Kaiser. Or maybe that's pronounced Kaiser. Honestly, I don't know. I'm going to say Kaiser. One he calls Kaiser. And they have the ability to know the desires of Anoki said for his people in the villages and settlements and encampments of the people of the Lord. And in their sweet fellowship together in community, they and they are like shepherds over the people, or that is to say, village pastors. You hear that family? So, the appointment of Kaser is like that of a pastor, and they have the ability to know the desires of the Father for his people in the villages and settlements and encampments. In other words, family, these family, they're going to know what they need to be bringing to the people. Are you hearing me, family? What the Father wants the people to know. Verse 28. And another, Anoki said, calls, Say Kel. And they are the ones who have skill at knowing the desires of Anoki said for his people in their needs for understanding and wisdom and in their ability to love one another and in their love for repentance you hear that family so these family they have the gift of knowing how the father how the father how the father identifies with people in their needs for understanding and wisdom and in their ability to love one another you see, family, when you see certain individuals who focus, 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 focus on the ability of the people to love one another, it's because it is their gift. You see, family, you might have experienced some preachers or pastors that have this gift. And there are people that cling to them because they need that. And then you go to other churches and then you see these other preachers preaching other things that are also needed and they're going deep into the scriptures they're breaking things down and you're like some people are like oh I like this particular pastor and others are like oh I like this particular pastor but what is not being realized is that they have different gifts and really they should be working in concert together family you understand let's keep reading Verse 29, and yet another 
Anoki said calls Labe because they can know the feelings of his heart for his people and their needs for healings, maturity, and growth, and in perfection of virtue. You see that, family? These are all very specific designations that are going to help people with the different places where they are in their growth. You understand? Everyone doesn't need to stay and sit under the same person forever and a day. You might need to revisit that person depending on a specific need that you feel. But understand, family, that you need different, you need different instructions you need different guidances for where you are in your walk in your process of becoming you need that family you need you need to know how to be directed to who you need to be directed to this is the reason why I don't get offended family when people unsubscribe from this YouTube channel hey it's cool you know I'm, I'm thankful for people when they were sitting, when they were sitting and learning the things that I've been led to teach. And now it may be time for them to go to someone else. And there'll be new people coming my way. The father, the father sends who he needs to send. And we got to be led to do that family, to go where we need to go. This is why when I... When I stopped dealing with a particular person who was teaching me things, being led of the spirit, hey, it's all good. I'm not, I'm not feeling bad. I'm not feeling any type of way about that person. I may have some disagreements about the way they go about something, but like the things that they taught me that were good, don't think that I'm not holding on to those things. I'm putting all those good things in my pocket. <laughs> Keeping them close to me. You understand? Let's keep reading. Verse 30. And another Anoki said calls Selaka. Selaka. Family, this is the word that is the basis for Selakia. When you say, excuse me, or forgive me, or pardon me in the Hebrew. That's, that's where this word comes from. Or that word comes from this word, I should say. Because what we're reading right now is ancient. It says, and another, Anoki said, calls Selica. And he calls them this because they can know the desires of Anoki said for the prosperity and the effectiveness of Yod, addressing the consequences of of agency with the power of a sure knowledge of forgiveness in the midst of Mayim. You see that family? So in other words, family, there are certain individuals that you'll go to when you, when you really need help dealing with feeling forgiven in a particular way that you have been walking. You understand that family? That's why this word is associated with this. This word, salakia, forgive me, excuse me, pardon me. You understand? Because sometimes we need help feeling forgiven. And there are certain individuals, there are certain teachers who have this gift that can help you with that. And lastly, verse 31, we're still reading, and lastly, there are others of the men of Ishad, whom he calls Abara. And these are the principal men of service. And he calls them Abara because they can know the desires of Anoki said for his people and for creation. And they can thus know of his desires for both man and and the Irkadeshi in their needs for understanding and wisdom 
and in their ability to love one another. And Mozart the Lamb, in his marvelous ability to bring an understanding and an awareness of sin and the joys of repentance and forgiveness. And these can draw a sure response from the Irkadeshi to change the course of the earth. And when the men of Abara in Ishad are present among the people of the Lord, then they all begin to express the nature of that authority to bring man and the Irkadeshi together. And they have become known as high priest communities. Wow, family. So family, do y'all see? Do y'all see the power, the importance of the right hand of the father? These, these, all these scriptures, family, that we read about the right hand of the father family. Now, they all make more sense when you understand the role that agency plays when you bring into concert the first and second decree of creation and you see why it is even this way. You understand, family? So now, family, you understand why there is a distinction between the right hand and the left. As a matter of fact, family, let's read it. Let's read it. Let's go to the book of Matthew, chapter 25, and let's read verses 31 through 34. That's the book of Matthew, chapter 25, verses 31 through 34. It says, When the Son of Man shall come in his glory, and all the holy angels with him, then shall he sit upon the throne of his glory, and before him shall be gathered all nations, and he shall separate them one from another as a shepherd divideth his sheep from his goats. And he shall set the sheep on his right hand, but the goats on the left. Then shall the king say unto them on his right hand, Come, ye blessed of my father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of of the world. Wow, family. Ask yourself a question. Are you a sheep? Or are you a goat? Have you been behaving like a sheep? Or have you been behaving like a goat? You know what? I was going to end it right here, but before we end it, let's go ahead and take a look at the righteous definition for a sheep. Let's do that. Let's go into the handbook of established righteousness. And let's take a look at the righteous definition for a sheep. Let's see. The righteous definition for sheep family. Feel, sheep feel dividing between good and evil. Family, are you hearing me? Sheep feel to divide between good and evil. And because I went there and read that just now, now I have to go to Malachi chapter 3. So let's go to Malachi family chapter 3. And let's read family. Malachi chapter 3. And first let's read verse 5. Malachi chapter 3 verse 5. It says, And I will come near you to judgment, and I will be a swift witness against the sorcerers, and against the adulterers, and against false swearers, and against those that oppress the hireling in his wages, the widow, and the fatherless, and that turn aside the stranger 
from his right. And fear not me, saith the Lord of hosts. You see that, family? You see that? Now, drop down in Malachi chapter 3. And let's read verses 16 through 18. It says, Then they that feared the Lord, and we know that that word feared is revered, reverenced. Then they that feared the Lord spake often one to another, and the Lord hearkened and heard it, and a book of remembrance was written before him for them that feared the Lord and that thought upon his name. And they shall be mine, saith the Lord of hosts, in that day when I make up my jewels, and I will spare them, as a man spareth his own son that serveth him. Then ye shall return and discern between the righteous and the wicked, between them that serveth God and him that serveth him not. You see that, family? Then ye shall return and discern between the righteous and the wicked, between the sheep and the goats, family, between the right hand and the left. You understand, family? You understand the significance now of the right hand? hand family with that being said family I pray that you all were edified today remember that I love each and every one of you the water Kai all praises to Anoki said Bahashem, Motsa, the Lamb. This is little son Sabal Nabaya saying much love and much shalom.